So what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight the top e the edges of uh, the knees, the feet, any high points of the ultramarine and what I'm going to use for that purpose is a Space Wolf's Grey. You can use obviously sometimes white or um, a really light blue but for this purpose I do like uh, Space Wolf Grey and also uh, I got a little bit of uh, the the base colour which was uh, Magic Blue as well guys just in case I need to uh, blend it in a little bit so uh, further ado guys let's start on obviously the pieces I'm going to concentrate on my by you at the moment is other fingers of the hand, the top of the of this hand as well, guys. Um, maybe a, a section by here, but uh, let's see where it goes. So what I've done, I've slightly watered down the space of grey with my uh, with my special mix of uh, flow. Uh, flow improver and uh, retarder just because of the lighting situation I got you at the present moment um, some of the bulbs are really really warm so I don't want the paint to, be, to uh, dry up too much guys as I can see now by rubbing it just on my th thumb my mix of my uh, space, space wolf grey is a little bit too wet so I'm just going to add a bit more Space Wolf Grey at the moment guys to uh, to my mix so here we go guys to uh, bear with me with this one this is, obviously, this is a new camera angle for me again so just gonna highlight the top pieces of fingers and just underneath if it goes in between the creases don't worry about that much too guys you can always go back over and put a little bit of a, a wash in between the creases you can just mix up uh, a little bit of black and blue wash as before or just put a little bit of a uh, James Workshop uh, wash in there guys just to fill out the creases so what I'm going to do now I'm going to use just on the top by here Just slightly down on the edge, like so. Once again, as you can see, I'm rubbing it off with my my thumb. And if you want it, I'll see to do this a little bit extreme you can always blend this in a little bit more and what I'm doing now I just wet my brush within the water and I'm just moving it back and forth to give that uh, more of a defined highlight and once again you can do this on the edge for the sake and then show you by here guys so I've highlight the top edge of this uh, shoulder I'm just at my brush in the water and because the paint has got a bit of flow and fluver and retarder still tends to keep the paint wet it doesn't dry out as quick such a thin layer So as you can see, that's exactly like that. And, what, oh. and 
you know, you can leave the model like that if you look just as just as uh, cool. But I'm just going to do one more bit. You can see it on the, the knee area. Just using the side of my paintbrush just to pick out the top edge of the knee. And I'll just show you now. If I just fill that knee area in like so, dip my brush in the water, just rub it off my hand so it's wet or damp, and I'm just moving it back and forth. It's only like a thin layer because it's such a bright colour, it tends to stand out. And you can wait for that to dry off a little bit, guys. And then you can just go back over the top edge. And the same principle with the foot, if you want, guys. You can either use just a small piece. Like so. Just remember, everything can be rectified, guys. Don't mind about making mistakes. But you can always go back over. It doesn't have to be with the airbrush. You can use the paintbrush now. This is what I personally uh, prefer to be, be honest, guys. Because this uh, airbrushing is a little bit uh, lazy, if you ask me. Everyone said, yep, there's another tool in the ar armory. And no doubt about it, they correct and it's perfect for um, for tanks and large vehicles etc. But when it comes down to the min shed itself guys, you just cannot beat a paint brush. And I still prefer like the even like bigger areas with the shoulder pads, I still prefer to uh, Blend it in with a paintbrush rather than a, with an airbrush, guys. For character models or you know one-off models, if I'm painting up a a squad or an army for a commission job, obviously the speed is uh, of the essence, and as everyone knows, time is money, so. An airbrush is a must for that, to be honest, guys. But if you're just painting the character model up, or just the one-off model, I still always like to revert back to the old paintbrush, not to lose any of the techniques. Because what you'll find, you'll end up becoming a little bit uh, dependent on your airbrush, guys, to be honest. Right guys, sorry for the quick pause, but my batteries and my camera side to die on me. <laughs> so where were we? Right, highlighting the, the top highlights up. So, some of this I don't usually do, but just for this video tutorial purpose, I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to highlight just these tips of the show the backpack up the best space buff grey. As I was saying, I'm playing on my thumb first just to get the the main excess off. And eventually dragging it backwards down to the, the part which I want highlighted the most. Once again you can do this part as you maybe see by here now if I wet the brush dip it back into the space wolf grey see if it highlights some of the just the one the chest piece by here. I 
as I said before with this new camera setup I've got I'm wetting the brush I'm just dragging it back and forth just to blend in with the original colour as I was saying the camera setup I got the present one I got three lights I got two desktop lamps behind the camera and I got my one of my painting lamps on top but the desktop lamps got these daylight bulbs which are very very powerful and they're very very warm as well so I expect the paint to dry out a hell of a lot faster than on my original painting station so I'm going to go back to this shoulder piece by here I'm not happy with I'm just dragging the paint back up to the highest area with the brush and I'm going to use a bit of the original magic blue by you guys once again, this has been pre thinned down. And obviously it's thinned down a little bit more again with some water which is already on my on the brush and my hand. More space wolf grey. And do the knee pad. Of course, what I'm doing at the moment by you for you guys is sometimes a little bit too extreme for highlighting. But I'm also showing you basically how to blend color in. Sometimes I don't do it as uh, extreme as this to be honest guys. But as you can see by there I just damp on my I got some water on my thumb. I'm just mixing in with the blue. As you can see it go like that now. It's like a blue wash. I'm just mix mixing in with the codex space wolf grey sorry guys space wolf grey and the brush I got by you at the moment guys is a Jarvis and it's five dash zero I don't know if you can uh, if the camera can pick this up. No, I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up. With the light bouncing off it. So I'm going to try this other foot by here now. blue in with the mix I'm just gonna rub it off this is probably you see a lot of paint that's got paint as thumb as they <laughs> nicknamed it these days guys is to uh, sometimes it's a lot easier just to and a lot quicker to work using your thumb as a a palette rather than the palette itself. By all means, you can actually thin it down if you want to, guys, and uh, use a um, oh, I forgot what they call now. A uh, wet palette, which what I use. I use a one of those plastic container trays, which you sometimes can get from Chinese or what you store in your food. 
I have a household uh, sponge one of those like big flat yellow ones which you know sometimes you do your washing up and uh, I, I use fill up with water and put some grease proof paper on top and that works just as well guys right I'm going to show you another thing by you now guys and I'm going to do a couple of streaks it's thinned down already to do once more and I'm going to do some lines don't have to do these but sometimes it's uh, gives the effect of hard light if you ever look at a car or anything with a high reflective sheen on it just like gold gold knob uh, a car if you google on google images you type in like say black knight or whatever you'll see the the highlights are very sometimes very subtle but some of them as well are very hard lines well, as you can see now but there guys that's a bit extreme to be honest but it's one cool tip guys it's one of the tools I use in my arse now and this is a uh, typical eraser or oh, rubber as some of you all know and it's a pencil type and it's quite hard the uh, eraser to be honest guys but if you ever have any spots of paint or you've realised that you've painted something which you shouldn't have and it's also too late to dry sometimes just dip it into water or you can use the acrylic for now work fine you can just just dab it onto the area they are to soak for a couple of seconds first then very very lightly if you want to you can just brush it away slowly and also this works fine if you're using um, pigment powders I use this technique um, for the blood angel draw pod which I, I done which I but one thing you've got to be careful of is not to brush too hard otherwise you want to eat through the paint because it's quite abrasive this rubber is but it's a very 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 good tool to keep in to your for your arsenal of tools guys so I'm going to have a quick look around once again I'll just show you that on top of your for my sake you can also you can use the airbrush for this but I'm just doing this for the painters out there which have not got an airbrush I'm just applying it on top which obviously is like a thin down it's like a glaze as such dip my brush in some water and I'm just blending it back and forth and you just leave that to dry now start on the other area and you can just build up the layers as you go along as you can see I put a hell of a lot of there but because the Space will raise water down quite a bit. I'm not too concerned because you can still manipulate it. Oh, that's a big word, isn't it? Into a uh, whatever you want. I tend to use this, do this, guys, with 
a lot with all my shading to be honest. So you can see I'm just using the bit of blue. Preferably water down quite a bit. Just taking most of it off the brush. So it's a very thin glaze. And I'll see if you're not too happy with it, you can just go back over it again with whatever colour you want. The same as the highlight I done on the this piece and that piece as well guys. I've seen when you see my last tutorial when I sprayed it, I used my my thumb as like a mask just to spray this bottom section and once again I use my thumb like so to use as a mask just to fill that section in but looking at it now I just like to add a little bit more highlight to it because it's actually dried down a bit so I'm just gonna Turn it down like so. And then I'm going to wet the brush. See if I can get some blue out of my thumb. Yep. Once again, if you're not happy with the shadow, and you can always do the exact same technique with like a black blue mix in the darker areas and, dry, and do the complete opposite way, then eventually you just merge the two colours in together. So at the moment, I'll do this one now for those streak techniques. very lightly on the brush just drag it straight down all in one line obviously try to keep it vertical as much as you can and at the bottom I'm doing like a as they call it I think a lot of people with tyranid armies use this method it's called like a feathering technique which I'm not 100% uh, brilliant to do that to be honest guys because I'm not a lover of tyranids <laughs> so there you go and obviously as you see now the hand isn't uh, 100% uh, brilliant to be honest guys so I'm just going to use some dark blue but usually I'll probably use some black and I'm just going to little dab on my thumb and I'm just going to make a little wash a bit more blue and I'm going to very carefully just just dab it in between the joints let that soak up I'm going to wait for that to dry and I'll probably, if I need to touch it back up, I probably will. So, I think this uh, camera view is a little bit bright at the present moment. Let me see if I can turn it down a bit. There you go. So as you can see guys, it's come along nicely. So for the next step I'm going to sh show you a little quick tutorial now how I do the non-metallic on the gun. 